Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, but it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Come back here to live, Matt. Yeah, it's fine. I know your ball will be pleased. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I, I can sing louder and fight harder and tell more lies than any man in this territory. <laughs> Who's that? I heard him say his name's Bull Hogan. Yeah, Marshall. it seems he's a buffalo hunter. He just stole a load of hides and can't wait to get rid of his money. Yeah, it looks like his friend there is kind of anxious to help him. Yeah. Yeah. I got $50. It says Bull is right. Hey, bartender, I told you I want a bottle of the best. This stuff ain't got the strength of pot. <laughs> now, you fetch me a drink that'll scratch going down and thump when it hits bottom. Now, hop to it. Bartender, when Bull says hop, you hop. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you! <laughs> You put that gun back in your holster and you leave it there. Who are you? I'm the marshal here. Yeah? Bull, look what's spoiling our party. Oh, we don't mean no harm, marshal. Have a drink. You're going to pay for this damage, understand? Well, sure I am. I've been out in the prairie six months, marshal. I aim to have some fun tonight, that's all. All right, go ahead. But leave a little of the town standing for the people who live here, will you? Well, it's going to cramp my style some, but <laughs> I'll try. Okay, you do that. <laughs> hey, Bull, the marshal's gone. Let's find us a couple of girls, huh? No, not yet, Darwin. I'm going to listen to the music. Hey, what? That's a real looker over there at that table, Bull. Well, go get her. <laughs> I sure will. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marshal. I really want Howdy. We're busy, mister. Well, this chair, ain't. Now, look here. What's your name? Frank Wilkins. Oh, you go on back to your friend. Not you, mister. You, little lady. You know, you're pretty. Beat it. You heard her. Mister, my friend Bull wants to talk to this little honey pot here. Why'd he send a sidewinder like you? That blowhard can talk to himself. Blowhard? Hey, Bull, come here. Yeah, Yeah, what do you want? This fella called you a blowhard. Is that right? Did you call me that? Yeah, I called you. Oh, oh. Hey. What are you? <laughs> oh, no, 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 don't, don't go for that gun. It's just a friendly fight. I ain't mad at you. We got a difference of opinion, is all. Hit him again, Bull. Why, sure, but... Not here. Like the marshal said, no need to bust up the place. We'll go outside. Unless you're yellow. Frank, It's don't... all right, Miss Kitty. You wait here. Come on, everybody. Me and this fellow's going to kick up some dust, and Loser! The loser buys the drink. Come on. And... Oh, no. Come on. Oh. Over here, Bull. Yeah. All right, now stand back there. Give him some room. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, no. You ready, mister? Yeah, I'm ready. Well, come on, fella. Get up. He can't. You whipped him good, Bull. Why, 
Why, that wasn't hardly no fight at all. Oh, shucks, we can't wait around for him to buy the whiskey. I'll buy it. Drinks for everybody inside. Everybody inside now. Hey, Delwin, Delwin, come over here. Dump, dump some water on that oh, stuff. Sure, boy. I'll take care of him. Real good care of him. <laughs> Call me a sidewinder, huh? Just listen a minute, uh, if you will. I've got a little story to tell you. Well, it's not so little. It's sort of a tall tale. It's about a Navy hero. Alfred Bullrod Stormalong was his name. Oh, he was a legend, he was. Where he was born doesn't matter. But he was first heard of in Boston Harbor. That was when he signed on as a member of the crew of a ship called the Lady of the Sea. Now, old Stormalong stood 30 feet tall and had muscles in his arms big as powder kegs. And when the good captain got a look at him, he said to the rest of the crew, here's an able-bodied seaman for you. Then he entered Alfred Bullrod's name in the log as Stormalong, A.B. Somebody realized that the A.B. could also stand for able-bodied, and they sort of picked it up. And for a long time, seamen would put that A.B. after their own names, meaning able-bodied seamen. Yes, sir. Well, old Stormalong was a great sailor, he was. And it wasn't many a year before he captained his own ship. The courser it was, one of the biggest afloat. Why, it was so long from stem to stern, it took a man on horseback 24 hours to make the trip. The mass was hinged so to let the sun and the moon get by Took a man a week to climb the rigging. Yes, sir. The courser was a big one. And Stormalong's skill as a sailing man became known throughout the seven seas. One of his greatest feats was taking the courser through the English Channel. Seems the channel was only about two inches wider than his ship at high tide. But old Stormalong was up to the problem. He, you bet he was. He bought all the soap in Holland. And he and his men greased down the sides of the courser. Well, sir, it slipped through that old channel as slick as a whistle. Didn't damage it one bit. But so much of that soap rubbed off onto the English coast that to this day, the cliffs of Dover are white. Of course, you believe me, don't you? <laughs> Say, it been nice being citizens of a country where you can laugh and talk about things free as a breeze and write and read, and worship, too. Yes, sir. Maybe you don't think about it much, but you should. I've been looking all over for you. Well, you found me, Chester. What is it? Frank Wilkins. He's dead. He's what? Dead. Well, I was sitting with him just a few minutes ago. Yes, sir, but he's dead now. Well, what happened? Well, they told me he got into a fist fight with some buffalo hunter over at Long Branch. Bo Hogan? Uh, yes, sir, that's the name. He went outside, and that man clean beat Frank to death with his fist. Wait a minute, Chester. Do you mean that all those people at the Long Branch stood and watched it and nobody stopped it? Well, it don't make sense, but they must have saw it. You know how they are when there's a fight. Well, I'm going to have me a talk with those citizens. Well, I already talked to some of them, Mr. Dillon. They swear up and down it was a fair fight. Chester and a fist fight a man's beat long before he's beat to death. And anybody not crazy for blood knows that. Well, I can't understand it. But one thing's for sure, Frank's dead. Doc examined him and then had the body moved over to his office. Is Bull Hogan still at the Long Branch? No, she ain't. He's gone. Well, he won't get far. I'll see to that. Delwyn? Is that you? Yeah, it's me, Bull. 
Got your horse hid in them trees. You better get going. Dell, when I come into Dodge City to have me a good time, it ain't no fun sneaking out here to the edge of town, hiding in the dark. I ain't having me no fun at all. Well, it's better than being hung, ain't it? You killed that man. Well, I didn't mean to. That don't make no difference. He's dead. You're stronger than you think you are. I never seen a man hit so hard. I I can swing faster and hit harder than any other man in this territory. Keep, keep your voice down, bull. Being strong won't do you no good at the end of a rope. Well, it was a fair fight. That don't matter. They aim to hang you, bull. You didn't see how they was all looking at you, cold-like. Why, if I hadn't have made you leave that saloon when I did, they'd have closed in on you then and there. I'm the only friend you got, bull. Del, and you ought to tell them that I didn't mean to do it. That wouldn't do no good. Not now. Your only chance is to get out of town till they cool off. Now, come on. Lucky I remembered seeing that old sod hut upriver on my way in. It's a good place to hide. You reckon I can find it? You go just like I told you, and you find it. I don't want no thanks for this, bull. I'm risking my neck to help you, but that's what friends are for. Stay here in town and see how the wind blows. Tomorrow I'll ride out and let you know. Mm. Bring some grub and a bottle, huh? Sure, sure. Now get going. I ain't never run away from nothing before in my whole life. You ain't running away, bull. You're being smart. I ain't never tried that before, neither. I hope it works. Chester, I've talked to every man who saw that fight, and they all agree it was no match. But while it lasted, it was fought fair. I guess i got to take their word for it. You see, you sure do. They were all surprised that Frank died from it, though. Well, my, I'd be surprised if he hadn't. Didn't knock down that hard. Yeah, cracking his skull on something when he fell. There's only one thing, Mr. Jones. If it was such a fair fight... Why did that cussed bull Hogan light out so fast? I don't know, Chester. I don't know. Yonder's Miss Kitty. Yeah. Matt. Matt, did you find bull Hogan? He left town, Kitty. I'm going to trail him in the morning. Oh, uh, Mr. Wilkins stopped in to see me. Well, you don't blame you none for what happened, Miss Kitty. Oh, no, Chester. He was just real broken up about his son. Matt, did you know he's offered a thousand dollars reward for Bull Hogan? Yeah. I wish he hadn't. Well, it's easy to see how he feels. Matt, that Delwyn Casper's here. Yeah. Hey, Casper. First, I want you to tell me where Bull Hogan is. And then I want you to get out of Dodge and don't come back. I don't know where he is, Marshal. How would I know? You were bragging about being his friend. Me? Well, I never laid eyes on Bull Hogan till tonight. I ain't no friend of his. We left here together, didn't you? But we went separate ways. Bull hightailed it right on out of town. Me, I just stepped out for a while because the climate here didn't seem healthy. It hasn't changed. Now, look, Marshal, I didn't do nothing tonight except go along with the crowd for a little fun. You got no cause to you ride me. You started that fight, Cass. Well, I didn't finish it. Bull Hogan done that. There ought to be some way to prove I'm no friend of his. Tell me where he went. If I knew, I would. I sure would. I hear the father of that poor fellow Bull killed has put up a thousand dollars reward for him. Is it true? Yeah, that's true. Marshal, could I clear myself if I helped you trail, Bull? You're going to be busy traveling, remember? Now you get out of here, and if I see you again tonight, I'll lock you up. You'll be out of town at daybreak. You're a hard man, Marshal. You ain't fair. I said get up. Well, you got rid of him, Matt. Yeah, it was a pleasure, Kitty. Casper just ain't no good at all. I sure would hate to be laying helpless somewhere and have him find me. Well, that's a good way to put it, Chester. The 
United States Army, a gallant record of peacetime service. Nineteen oh four, commercial business is transacted by radio for the first time through the United States Army Signal Corps station in Alaska. American industrial might is based on the technique of mass production, which began with the manufacture of rifles by the United States Army in the 1820s. Captain John Hall in 1819 designed a unique breech-loading rifle and began production at the Federal Armory in Harpers Ferry, Virginia. Captain Hall then designed and built machinery to mass produce the rifle with all parts interchangeable, a revolutionary advance in manufacturing technology. The United States Army. A gallant record of peacetime service. Bull. Hey, Bull. Hey, is that you, Joe? You got here early. Yeah. I see you found the hut. There's nothing to it. You gave me real good directions, Joe. What, what's the news? You don't look good for you, Bo. They got a thousand dollar reward out. No. No, it was a fair fight. It ain't like I done murder. They think you did. It's the same thing. Did you bring me something to eat? No. I thought about it. I decided not to waste the money. No, what do you mean, waste it? What's that gun for? No. No, when you... No, when you said the, you was my, my only friend. I guess I was lying. Mr. Dillon, I swear I just don't understand you today. First off, you run that Delwyn Casper out of town, then we meet him out here heading back to Dodge, and you tell him it's all right. Well, he says he got Bull Hogan. He claims the reward. Yeah, and you just look at him and nod, just say that money's all his right now. You think he really got Bull Hogan? There's no doubt about it. All we got to do now is get him. Casper killed Frank, Chester. What? And he probably clubbed him with a pistol. You know, it's something you said to me that started me thinking in that direction. Me? Yeah, you said that you'd sure hate to be helpless and have Casper find you. I'm sure now that that's what happened to Frank. The problem is to prove it. There's that sod hut he talked about. Yeah. My goodness, there's bull, too. Bull Hogan, new shirt and all. He's wearing a gun. He wasn't shot in the back. No, but he might as well have been for all the chance he had. Well, I'll uh, ride down over to Sykes' place and buy his show. No. No, Chester, borrow a wagon instead. We're going to take him back to Dodge. <laughs> I couldn't get a word out of Chester except you want to see me. That's right, Casper. Well, do I get my reward? I think you could say that. Then you found Bull. Yeah, we found him. We had quite a time bringing him in, though. Bringing him in? He's the strongest, roughest man I ever tangled with. What are you trying to say, Mark? We got Bull here in jail. Doc gave him a powder to put him to sleep. He's in the first cell. Go see for yourself. What about you? He's dead. I, I shot him. Yeah, you shot him all right, only you didn't kill him. Well, I did. I hit him right in the chest. Well, that's what saved his life, Casper. Here, you ever seen one of these things before? Yeah, it's, it's one of them Indian charm bags, isn't it? That's right. A leather pouch full of pebbles and sand and bones. Now, Bull's a lonely, superstitious man. He was wearing this around his neck. And that's what stopped your bullet, Casper. See? But... 
But he fell down. He was dead. I... Uh, Doc says that a blow over the heart like that will stun a man cold, but it only lasts for a few minutes, and then he's as good as new. You're lying to me. You're trying to trick me out of my reward. No, you'll get what's coming to you, Catherine. You know, Bull's got an idea that somebody clubbed Frank Wilkins with a pistol while he was knocked out. Well, I'm going to lock you in that cell with Bull and let the two of you talk it over. Lock me in with him? Well, now, you can't do that. Oh, why not? Neither one of you will have a gun. You'll just talk what could happen to you. We'll go wake him up now, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, Chester, go wake him up. All right, come on, Casper. You're going in there with him. No, no, I'm not. Oh? Well, then maybe you'd rather tell me about it. Huh? But I didn't do nothing. I, I ain't going in there. Oh, yes, you are. Now you're going to tell that to Bull Hogan face to face right now. Locked in. No. No, I done it. I, I club Wilkins with my pistol. It was me killed him. You hear that, Chester? Yes, sir. All right, take his gun. I'm Johnny. Now lock him up, Chester. And we'll bury Bo. Bury him. Then he is dead. Yeah, he's dead. And you're going to be right behind him, Casper. I hope he's waiting for you. Directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were composed by Ray Kepper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another story of the western frontier of America in the 1870s on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.